it. Good morning to you all. Let's see if this works. Ta-da. It works. Uh, 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 Again, good morning to you all. Boys and girls, it's wonderful to be here with you today. And I cannot believe how many people came out here to see about you. This is awesome. I mean, people, people left their big jobs to come down here to spend some hours with you today. And I think it's because we care about you. That's the reason I'm here. I care about you. I care about where you are right now, and I see you in the future. And I care about what I see you doing. This activity that you will engage in today is going to help you to prepare yourselves for what you want to be, for how you want to represent yourselves, your families, oh, this is going to be so good. Because you get an opportunity to uh, do a bullseye view on your future. You know what research is saying to us right now? It's saying that children your age will have jobs that don't even exist right now. Uh, they could exist in your minds, which is superb. I love the fact that you can even think of your job. Anytime you look around your community and your neighborhood and your school, and you say to yourself, I wish we had something to take care of that problem, what you've just done is created an opportunity for yourselves an opportunity to discover, to create, to initiate something that no one has ever seen before. And uh, that's, that's what makes us proud. That's why we do what we do every day. I know that reading and writing and the math gets a little bit tedious, but listen to me. It is getting you ready. It is getting you ready. And you need to be serious about it. You're fifth graders. You're half grown. The, is that the truth? No, you're still kids. You're still kids. And you know, I say that to my 42-year-old. You know what I call him? Baby. <laughs> Can't help it. You know, he's my son forever. And uh, I respect that piece of him. He's a dad, and he takes care of his boys, but I still call him my baby when he comes to my house. Yes, I do. Anyway, they, uh, I had a script today. Uh, where's Mr. Tracy? Yeah, he sent me a letter, and he told me what to say. And, uh, but you know what? I am the superintendent, so I say what I want to say. And today I want to take five minutes. They gave me 15, but I'm going to take five because I want to read this book to you that I absolutely love. I've read it, I promise you, more than a hundred times, but I love reading it because the message in it is my message to you today. The title of this book is Giraffes Can't Dance. Would you say the title? Giraffes Can't Dance. Yeah, that's the title. Written by Giles Andretti. And I gotta see how I'm gonna do this with the mic. Let me see, let me see what my teacher boys can do without it. Can you hear me? Yes. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. There's Gerald the giraffe. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now, every year,
year in Africa, they hold this jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. Well, the warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rocked and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did the cha-cha-cha with a very Latin feel, and eight baboons teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming, and they soon began to roar, hey, look at clumsy Gerald. The animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. You're right, he thought. I'm useless. I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor, started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, <coughs> coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on, but sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music when you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing things. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was switching around. <laughs> he threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I'm dancing, woo, I'm dancing, yeah, I'm dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How'd you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, please tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and the stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. Boys and girls, the music that I love is that of educating children. I am a teacher. I was a teacher at age seven. I taught little dolls that couldn't move. And then in the neighborhood as an only child, I was around uh, families that had lots of children. And um, so when you're an only child, or back then when you were, you might have an extra bag of cookies that the other children didn't have. So I'd have them line up and I'd share my cookies with them, but I was the teacher. And that's the music that has made my life sing for almost 40 years. Um, there are professions out there that can make your heart sing. Things that you already know that you would love to do. 
Don't listen to the lions and the sneering of anyone who tells you that you cannot do it. Just like they were telling Gerald what? Giraffes can't what? Yeah. Ha ha. He showed them. He found the right music. And today as you walk around and listen to these different individuals who are committed to the work that they are doing, they are going to tell you about opportunities. Keep your ears open. Listen. And uh, let them be the little cricket in the story. Because it was a cricket that came along to let Gerald know that there were opportunities. So the room is filled with crickets today. You listen and enjoy. Okay? It was great being here with you today. I love you. And I want you to keep working. I know there's only 14 days left in this school year. But you better not act like it. You better keep working. Enjoy your summer. Be safe. Do some studying. Read, read some books. Every one of you should be reading over the summer. OK? All right. Thank you. Superintendent Allen, and on behalf of T.S. Morris Elementary School, we would like to present you with a little healthy snack for your day today because we know you have superpowers and you need super energy. So thank you on behalf of P.T.S. Morris Elementary. <laughs> 